I made up a yo-yo problem and I don't know if it's gonna work out nice or not. I didn't really test it out, but we're gonna do it anyway. So here's the problem. Imagine that I have a yo-yo and you don't really have to imagine it because it's right here, see? Here's the yo-yo. And imagine that I'm holding it with a string and this is, I'm gonna assume it's like a just a, a solid cylinder. It's not, doesn't have this like uh, inside thing. And so I'm gonna pull on this and, and I'm gonna lift it up and it's gonna move, the center mass is gonna move up 10 centimeters, which it gets us kind of far. And while it's doing that, it's going to unroll like that. So I have the distance the string moves is 20 centimeters. The distance the center mass moves is 10 centimeters. Does that make sense? And so if I know, if I'm gonna make up a mass of this, the yo-yo, I picked a half of 50 grams, 0 0.05 kilograms. The radius is two centimeters. This is the moment of inertia for a cylinder. So the question is, how fast is it moving when it gets here? And I put a little line there, you see, so you can see that it rotated. How fast is it the center of mass moving and how fast is it rotating? And then finally, how long did it take to do that? And so I think I'm supposed to say that uh, the yo-yo, the way I read it, uh, you know, was originally a weapon, right? Because you could throw it and then you could pull it back. I don't know if that's true or not, but I like to say it anyway, just because, you know, it's fun to say stuff. Okay, so, but here's the picture. I have the yo-yo here. I put a little mark right there. Oh, I didn't say the force. Let's say the force, the magnitude of that pulling force is 0 0.6 newtons. Again, I might be picking some bad numbers. But, you know, you got to live with your bad choices. You make bad choices, you got to live with them. So how do we do this? I mean, because, um, you know, the very first thing that you could think of is, should I use this, F net, is the change in momentum with respect to time, or uh, work is the change in energy. And, and I wrote that really poorly. And so in this case, you should use this, right? Because we don't care about direction. We don't care about time, except for the end, and that's just a little trick and add on there. But we're given changes in position. So this suggests that I need to deal with work energy principle. Next question, what is my system? The work energy principle says the work is a change in energy, but you can't do that unless you first assign, define what your system is. And then on top of that, we have to say, is this going to be a point particle system or a real system or both? And the answer is both. I picked this on purpose as both thing, right? So in a point particle system, we only have change in kinetic energy of the center mass. It's our only type of change in energy. And the work done is the work is the, the force times the displacement of the center of mass. In the real system, we have a whole bunch of types of changes in energy. And the work done is F dot delta r f how far the force moves so that's the big difference there in the point particle system we're treating it just like a point we don't care about anything else and so we're only dealing with the center as a point in the center with represented by the center mass so it turns out that if i want to find out how fast the center mass is moving i should use the point particle system because that has the kinetic energy of the center, center mass so let's do that let's start off using the point particle system for this situation. So let me redraw my picture. Here I have that and then I have that like that. So in the PPS I have work uh, is going to be F dot delta R center mass. But I actually have two forces acting on this. I have this force, I'll call this FP, and then I have the gravitational force FG. So the work is actually going to be F P dot delta R center mass plus F G dot delta R center mass. So you have to do both of those. Okay. And you could do F net, but I think it's better just to separate them up because, and then point particle system, they're going to be moving the same distance, but just to be safe. So let's write out all our values. F P is going to be the vector 0 0.600 newtons. Uh, F G is going to be the vector. I'm just going to write this as, uh, no, that's not right. Why, <laughs> why would I put that? It's this. FP is 0, 0 0.60 newtons. 
fg, I'm just going to write g, is 0, negative mg, 0 newtons, right? Because that's in the downward direction. And then delta r center mass is going to be this distance right there. That's going to be 0, 0 0.10 0 meters. It moved up 10 centimeters. So delta r is center mass of 10 centimeters. So let's calculate the work. Work is going to be equal to uh, fp dot delta r plus fg dot delta r. fp dot delta r. I'm just going to write this as, um, let's call this h. I want to use, because I don't want to use, I don't want to put numbers in. Let's call this h1. Let's call it h. Yeah, for the height. Uh, so this is going to be f P, the magnitude times h minus m g h and so you could actually write this as it doesn't really matter f p minus m g which is the net force times h it's the same thing so that's the work done and that's going to be equal to delta k center of mass now if it starts from rest then I can write this as work is one half m v two squared minus one half mv1 squared, and this is center mass. But the initial velocity is zero, so that's that. Now I can solve for v2. I get v2 is the square root of two times the work divided by the mass. And let's put in all our values here. This is gonna be the square root of two times fp minus mg times h over the mass. Let's just see if that makes sense. Okay, let's just check the unit. So this is newtons, newtons. So that whole thing is newtons. Uh, newtons per kilogram. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So if I divide by the mass, I get kilogram meters per second squared and multiply by height of meters, I get meters squared per second squared and I get the units of meters per second squared. If, notice here, if fp is less than mg, I get a negative number here and, it, and I get an imaginary velocity. If I'm pulling less than the gravitational force, it's not gonna move up 10 centimeters, okay? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in uh, in a calculator. You could do it in a calculator. But it's got enough numbers in there. I'm going to use Python. And, you know, Python is by far the best calculator um, in the world. Uh, so you can do this with a web page. And you can do it on your, on your phone even. So let's just do this. I'm just going to put in my values here. G is 9.8. I'm using the magnitude of the gravitational G for field G. And then I had mass is 0 0.05. FP was, see, this is why that's nice to put in that H value. Uh, 0 0.6. What else did I have? Uh, MGH. H was 0 0.1. That's in the mass. I got that. Okay. So now let's say V center mass. I'm just typing in my equation right here. It's the square root of 2 times FP minus M times G times H. All of that divided by M. Now I can print that. Print V center mass equals VCM. I'm doing this all nice and everything in meters per second. Run that. So 0.66 meters per second, that seems reasonable, right? I mean, I don't really know. I'm not a yo-yoologist or anything, but it's not a bad number. Okay, so 0.66, let's go with 0.66 meters per second. So let's write that down, 0 0.66 meters per second. Now, what's the angular velocity? Okay. We're going to do the same thing, but now I'm going to use the real system. And in my real system, I'm going to do this a little bit different. I'm going to say the real system of the yo-yo, not the yu-yu, the yo-yo plus the earth. If I add the earth in my system, then I can have gravitational potential energy. So now I have this. The work done is going to be the change in translational kinetic energy plus the change in rotational kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy. Let's call it delta U. And the work is going to be F P 
dot delta r f. How far the center of mass moves? So I already know fp, right? fp is just, I'll call that fp. No, it's not. I did that again. 0, fp, 0. And delta r f, the, the, how far the center, the force moved, right? I already set that over here. Was well, 20 centimeters. So it's going to be equal to, and we'll call that s. So we'll say uh, for string, 0, s, 0, and s equals 0 0.2 meters. How about that? I know that's dumb, but I just like to do it that way. So that means the work is going to be fp dot f, and that's just going to be fp s. And that's going to be the change in translational kinetic energy, which I actually already know. I just calculated that. Delta kt uh, plus 1 half i omega final squared minus 0. It started from rest. This is the uh, k rotational is 1 half i omega squared, where i is the moment of inertia. And I calculated that before. I, well, I didn't calculate. I is 1 half m r squared for a disk. And then I have the change in potential, which is going to be, let's call the, let's call this y equals 0. So the initial potential is 0, and the final is mgs. So it's going to be the final potential of mgs minus the initial potential, no, mgh. It's this height right there, h. Okay. So now I mean I really have everything I need. I just want to solve for omega. So let's write this as uh, one half i omega two squared minus equals f p s minus uh, delta k t, which I have. I'm going to write a different thing for that, uh, and then I have to subtract minus m g h. Okay, so this, I could put in a number there, but if you think back over here, the change in kinetic energy was this. It's Fp minus Mg times H. So that's kind of nice, right? So I'm going to write this as Fps minus F, ah, Fps minus Mg Fp this is Fp times S minus that, Fp minus Mg. So it's going to be Fph minus plus Mgh. And you see where I'm going here. And then I got that term uh, plus Mgh. So the minus Mgh. Those cancel. I don't even need those. You could put them in there, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then I have this term right here. I'm going to write this as Fp times S minus H. And so really if you think about this, what it says is that the, the total work is Fp times S. But if I subtract sort of off the, the center of mass motion, then I get the extra stuff which goes into rotational kinetic energy. And that's all I need. So this is going to be 1 half i omega 2 squared. So if I solve that, I get omega 2 is the square root of 2 fp s minus h, all that over i. Um, so let's check the units here. So this is going to be newtons, and that's meters. Uh, this is going to be i has units of kilograms meters squared. So I get a kilogram meter per second squared, the kilograms cancel, uh, and then I have meters squared down here and a meter there, so I cancel one of the meters, I get one over seconds, and the square, second squared, one over second squared, that is the right unit for rotational kinetic, rotational angular velocity is one over seconds, or radians per second, so the units work out. Um, again, if I, if I don't pull this further than it moves, then I get an imaginary angular velocity. But let's go ahead and plug this in to our, our excellent calculator in Python because we like Python. So back to Python. You can save this code too, but I never save it because it, it doesn't really do anything for me. So let's put up here S 
S is 0 0.2. That's the only thing that we ha that we don't have, right? And omega, I'm going to choose omega, is the square root of 2 times Fp times, I'm looking at my equation over there, S minus S, S minus H, all divided by I, which I didn't calculate. So let's put right here, I equals uh, 0 0.5 times M times R squared, which I don't have R. R equals 0 0.02. And then print omega equals uh, omega radians per second. Let's see if that works. Okay, 109 radians per second. Um, that's kind of fast, but I don't really care. Uh, it's fine. So 100, and let's do 109.5. I'll, I'll put that over there. 109.5, 109.5 radians per second. Okay, now one last thing. How long did this take? I'm just curious, right? How can we figure out how long it? We didn't work in the in the uh, the time region, but is there any way I can get? See, look like that. How long that takes? Well, if everything has constant accelerations. If, if they're changing with constant uh, rates of change, I can actually just look at the center mass and get an estimate for how long it took. So here's, here's where it starts and here's where it ends up. And so I know this is 0 0.1 meters. And I also know this velocity, V2, is what did I get? Six, 0 0.66 meters per second. And so let's call this delta Y. And if I, and that's the y velocity. I can define the average velocity, v average, as delta y over delta t, and that's gonna be v2 plus v1 over two. The, the average velocity is the average velocity. And I know that's zero, I know that, I know that, I know that, I can solve for this. So this is a nice little trick to remember. And it's better to write this as a uh, y component so you don't have to, to divide by vectors, that just gets weird. Um, so we can definitely do this in the y direction. So if I do that, I can multiply both sides by 2, uh, divide both sides by this, I get, um, and then multiply by delta t. Delta t is 2 delta y over v2 plus 0. So that's meters divided by meters per second. That's right. Okay. And so this is going to be equal to, let's go ahead and put that in the calculator. I was going to do my actual calculator, but I'm like, I started with Python. I should finish with Python, right? So the time this takes, uh, it's going to be equal to, I'll call it dt. dt is 2 times dy, which is going to be equal to h, uh, divided by v2, which I just called vcm. See, I already, had, I already calculated all that stuff, so I don't need to... Enter anything complicated. Print dt equals dt in seconds. So 0.3 seconds. That seems reasonable. No, that's a short amount of time. Everything seems reasonable. I'm pretty happy. And that's that. So just to, rem to remind you, what we did here, the most important thing was to use both the point particle system and the real system to solve this problem. And there you go. And Python's great.